Hi everyone, this is uh, mostly for Chem 101, but one or two folks might find it useful as well. What I wanted to do before the first midterm is just show you a few very common mistakes which, you know, unfortunately will cost you points. But if you look at this video, hopefully we'll uh, fix that and it won't be an issue, okay? So some things, you know, which could, you know, negatively affect your grade. Let's take a look, right? So, <clears throat> one, <laughs> format, right? So I send you a doc and a PDF, right? Send me back as an email attachment, a doc or a PDF to pmails at jjc.edu. Now that's in the, remember, watch the uh, announcement area and the assignment area, so it's laid out in much more detail there. So I'm just repeating what you see at the announcement and assignment area, okay? Do not send it back through Canvas, okay? People got a little bit confused. I'm not asking you to send it via a personal email. No, send it from your school email account, just not through Canvas. Canvas. Canvas will not sometimes attach documents, right? So, you know, just send me a regular email. It doesn't matter which email account, school, work, whatever, right? As long as it's not through Canvas. So don't use the Canvas app or program to send emails. And that's a good rule of thumb for most things because Canvas, although good for some things, is not good for email. Okay, so send me your doc or PDF as an attachment to my school address from any email you like. <laughs> but not through Canvas, okay? Obviously before the deadline, right? Okay, so that's that. And, you know, don't send me pictures, right? I won't grade a picture of a piece of paper. It has to be a doc or a PDF, okay? And also has to be in the correct format, landscape or portrait, obviously portrait. All right, now, <clears throat> no pics, okay. <laughs> when you send me, and I had a cut, literally just a couple of students who were able to prove, you know, I didn't get there um, attachments because they sent them through Canvas, right? Okay, so they were able to show me a sent file from their email program showing that, that it's been sent, right? But I don't want to do that, so just double check your sent slash outbox right after you send me your assignment and double check I got it, right? It will say sent, <laughs> right? Check your sent or, you know, just check your sent file. All right, double check, right? It's particularly important if you're, I really don't recommend using a tablet or a phone, but if you're trying to use a phone to do this, you need some record, okay? You need to kind of store it on your PC, get it in a file, and then attach it to an email. Don't try and work chemistry 101, 102 through a phone. It's never a good idea, okay? All right, <clears throat> next thing, subscripts, superscripts. I've been <laughs> talking about this for a while now. I fully expect you to be able to kind of fully do superscripts, like, you know, FE3 plus or whatever it is, right? Subscripts, H2O, right? And that also goes for a scientific notation numbers, one times 10 to the superscript three, right? Okay, I don't wanna see any of this business, none of this, right? None of that, none of this, only this, okay? This means you're getting the answer wrong, okay? You don't wanna have that, all right. <laughs> so superscript, subscript, I, I, you know, I forwarded a video, it's just literally Hotkey on the PC is just control plus minus, right? Or control shift plus minus, sub subscript, superscript. Or you can just do it through the fonts buttons. All right, super easy to do. You just have to look it up. All right, next thing, math. Now, this one, and a couple of people did this on the quiz, and I just want to double check you understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same question I did on, you know, this is chemistry 101 proper quiz, right? So 22 gallons to milliliters. So 22 gallons to milliliters. I'll show you a couple of wrong ways to do it and the right way to do it, okay? Let's do the wrong way first, right? Okay, so let's think about it. So we're gonna go gallons to milliliters. We look at our data sheet and it's always a good idea just to, you know, if you're not good at planning the journey, just look at the data sheet, right? We got, well, Let's look, right? There's a gallon, right? So we can go gallons to liters, and then, hey, you know milliliters, thousands of a liter. So there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, right? So we're kind of making our own conversion factor oh, down here, right? So the conversion factors we use are one gallon equals, oh, let me bring that down. One gallon equals 3.786 liters, fair enough. And then one liter equals a thousand milliliters. Okay, so this is what many people did, right? So the most common mistake is this, right? So you got your journey. So we're going to go. If you think about a journey, gallons 
to liters to milliliters, right? That's our journey, right? Remember, each one of these should be a discrete or separate fraction in our conversion chain, right? Okay, this is what people did. And the logic you use on a calculator is not the same as the math logic that's actually real, if that makes sense. I'll show you, right? So 22 gallons over one. Keep, keep the tops and bottoms separate, right? Now gallons on the bottom. One gallon is 3.786 liters. Fantastic. And people press the equals button there, right? And they get some kind of answer. Let me just get my phone here and work this out. Okay, so 22 times 3.786. 83 point two sig fig. Well, I'll do the sig figs at the end. That's another area we've got to talk about. Two nine, right? That, as written, is correct. Okay, that as written is correct, right? But it doesn't answer the question, does it? Right? So this is true. This statement is true. Right? So if I write that's true, right? However, what people say then is, well, I, but, oh, wait a minute, I want to convert that to milliliters. So I'm just going to write times <laughs> one liter is a thousand milliliters. All right? And that equals the answer, which is 8.3 times 10 to the 3 milliliters. Do you see where the error is? Okay, this is, yes, that's true, right? This number times this equals this number. Absolutely does, right? If you'd taken this answer to a separate line and kind of done that separately, you would have been fine, right? But a lot of people just said, oh, this then times a thousand is the answer. No, it ain't. It's not. This times this is 83. It's not 83 times a thousand, is it? It's like this, right? So if I said to you, what six times two, and you told me that was 12, you'd be right. That's like this bit. Right? But if I told you, well, 6 times 2 equals 12 times 3, is that right? Does 12 equal 36? No, it doesn't, right? So the bottom line is you can't press equals halfway through your chain math. You can either do it in parts, take the answer, convert it again, which gets really tedious, right? Because you might have multiple little conversions, or you do it correctly. And I'll show you the correct way in a second, okay? Now, the other one, which is a problem, same as above, really, same as above. So people did 22 gallons, say whatever it was, times 3.786 liters is one gallon. And they got, you know, 83, 000, 83 gallons, right? Two, sorry, 83 liters, right? Fantastic, right? So far, so good. And then they just said equals <laughs> multiplied by, oh, they said, oh, yeah. 83 liters, uh, oh, that's just, you know, move the decimal place three times, right? So they said, oh, that's 8,329 <laughs> milliliters. Huh? <laughs> how, how, this is true, but you've got to show the conversion step, right? You've got to show how you get from liters to milliliters. You have to use the fraction, one liter is 1,000 milliliters, which we'll show you in a second, right? Okay, so you can't just kind of in your head move the decimal place and just write the answer. You've got to show that conversion step. And if you look back on... Um, Quiz one, I, you know, I, I go through that there, right? I'll do it again here, but I'll go through it there, right? So be careful, right? One, you can't press equals halfway through because, <laughs> you know, 12 doesn't equal 36 in my analogy, right? Okay. And then you can't just kind of move the decimal place. You have to show it as a true conversion, all right? And finally, and before we get onto the, the correct way to do it, obviously that's two significant figures, so you can't write 8,329, 8, it has to be 8.3 times 10 to the 3. Scientific notation, remember, is the way to have less significant figures in a big number, if that makes sense. So 8,000, you know, 8,000, four digits, right? As one digit, that's 8 times 10 to the 3. Okay. Now the correct way to do it. So, <laughs> 22 gallons times one gallon is 3.786 liters. And then I remember my journey, right? Gallons to liters to milliliters. Well, that gets me gallons to liters. What gets me to milliliters? One liter is 1,000 milliliters. So 
in math terms, I work out the tops after cancelling, right? So 22 times 3.786 times 1,000 equals 8,000, what number? 329. And everything underneath cancelled, right? Sometimes that won't be true, and you have to kind of like maybe divide by some number underneath. But in this case, not true, right? But that's that. And then, you know, that's four out of five right now. No sig figs there. Oh, sorry, wrong sig figs there. So that is two sig figs. Pretty much always the sig figs of the given quantity. 8.3 times 10 to the 3 milliliters. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense, right? So you're going to get, if you're Chemistry 101, <laughs> you know, a question that involves lots of conversions. And unlike the quiz, it's going to be multiple step conversions. My idea with the quiz was to kind of introduce you to that gently through this last question. If you got, go check your quiz. If you got this last question wrong, it doesn't look like this. It's either because you pressed equals halfway through, right? And then multiplied by a thousand, right? Or you manually move the decimal place. You've got to show all work. Remember, most of my points go for work, right? Okay, so make sure that methodology makes sense. A couple of people are still doing it, and I had a nice chat with a student on the office hour. We talked about how, you know, in high school you did this kind of ratio thing, right? You know, and then you kind of played with ratios and that's kind of the supermarket math, right? That's what I call it. So, hey, you know, uh, bananas are three for a dollar. You know, how many bananas can I get for four dollars, right? And you, <laughs> you can work it out in your head. That's ratio math, yeah? That gets you a good distance to understanding things at the supermarket. But when we get in the chemistry, it kind of fails after one link in the chain conversions. So that ratio math would get you to there, right? It wouldn't allow you to finish the chain, so to speak. So if you are still persevering with ratios, my real honest good advice is, particularly if you want to you know, go further in science and 101, get on the chain method, okay? Get on the chain method, it's the best way to do it, okay? And, you know, I came from England where they don't teach the chain method, okay? They teach kind of consecutive mini steps, right? And I actually prefer the chain method, it's a much better way to do it. All right, now, <clears throat> hopefully that makes sense. Let's just recap, so format, you know, obviously I'm going to send you an email on Sunday afternoon with your midterm. It will be attached as a blank PDF and a, and a blank doc, right? Pick one of those, right? Complete it how you like, right? My preferred method is to print, a, you know, print it, fill, the, fill it in by hand and then scan it and send it back, right? That's easier, right? But you can type. If you're good at typing, you can do the doc, right? Okay. Last resort, yes, you can work out things on a blank piece of paper and take a picture, but definitely cut and paste those little slithers of work into the space in the document, right? You can't just send me a picture of your notebook. All right. <laughs> All right, so no pics, right? No, no raw pictures of a notebook. You've got to cut and paste. That's a little bit of work, but if you've got a, access to a scanner, it's easy. If you can type with subscripts and things like that, it's easy, right? Okay, so, okay, so send the doc or a PDF back to me at my regular address, not through Canvas, because it doesn't like attachments. Any email will do, work or school, but not Canvas, all right? Double check your sent box. We don't have that situation where I don't get it, and you say you send it, and then we have to kind of do some forensic stuff, right? That's never fun. So double check your sent box. Superscripts, subscripts are essential now, okay? Answers will be graded incorrectly unless they're in the correct format. Okay, and remember also, I should mention this point, quantities equals number and unit. A few of you are still writing just the number part, so 1 times 10 to the 3 doesn't mean anything. 1 times 10 to the 3 meters means something, so number and unit, right, always. And scientific notation if it's above 100 or below 1, right, so 0 0.5, 0 0.004 is better as a scientific notation. And then again, the math, I talked about the math. Make sure you're using kind of proper form when you do your chain conversions. Don't press equals halfway through, right? Don't manually move decimal places as a conversion thing. Just make sure you actually do the conversion with, and this is the pop, most popular one probably, milliliters and liters is very, very popular, right? It might be kilograms and grams, the same idea, right? A thousand grams is a kilogram. So you make your own conversion factor knowing that one liter equals 1,000 milliliters, or one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. And you make those conversion factors, of course, 
through knowing how to work the prefix table. So milli is 10 to the minus 3, kilo is 10 to the 3, right? So 1 kilogram equals 10 to the 3 grams. Okay, because 10 to the 3 is K, isn't it? Not that one. Okay. All right, if you're a bit sketchy on that, double check the, um, the, uh, the conversion factors packet. Okay, that's always good to check through before a test just to make sure you're in the right kind of mindset. All right. Stop there. Any questions? Office hour? Oh, no, oh I also put a, um, a discussion question up. Is anyone interested in the Tuesday office hour, right? I actually had, it's Thursday today, office hour day. So, oh, it's the Thursday before the midterm. One student. Honestly, <laughs> that's not good, right? If you've got questions about the midterm, which is in a couple of days' time, and, you know, you're not turning up at the office hour, it's tricky. It's very difficult to, to actually discuss chemistry through email. It needs interaction, okay? It's a bit like, I have an Italian wife, so I can say this. It's a bit like speaking Italian. There's lots of hand stuff, <laughs> right? So if you're, you know, a bit worried about how it's going for you in Chemistry 101, please, please, please come to the office hour, okay? <laughs> It's on Thursdays, and I have put that feeler out there for Tuesdays. If you can do a Tuesday post at Canvas, and I'll, uh, you know, if I get two or three people, I'll do it. Okay, stop there. Uh, see you guys next time.